Hello there, this is Mr. Masonet, and what we're going to do today is just practice solving equations involving negative values as well as fractions. In this equation, we have a variable on both sides of our equation. So what we're going to do is send the x over on the left-hand side of our equation, and then we're going to isolate that x variable. Well, let's start by taking this minus 8 and moving it over to the right-hand side of our equation by doing the inverse, which is adding 8. So we're going to bring down our equal sign here, cancel out these opposite integers, and bring down the negative 1 fifth x. And on this side, we have 4x plus 11. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take this 4x, and we're going to move this term all the way on the left-hand side of our equation. The opposite of positive 4x is negative 4x. So we have to combine negative 4x with negative 1 5th x. Because both of these are negative, we would just add those values together. So that would be a total of negative 4 and a fifth x. And we're going to drop our equal sign down. These terms are opposite, so they cancel out, leaving us with 11 over on the right-hand side. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change this coefficient, which is a mixed number, into an improper fraction. So we write the same denominator, which is 5. And the numerator is 5 times 4, which is 20, plus 1 more, which is 21. So negative 4 and a fifth is the same thing as negative 21 fifths. x equals 11. So now I'm going to take this and write it here at the top because I ran out of space. And we have to get rid of that negative 21 fifths and send it over on the right hand side. Now whenever you have a coefficient, which is a fraction, what you can do to get rid of it is to multiply it by its own reciprocal. So we're going to take this improper fraction and we're going to multiply it by negative 5 over 21. Now, we have to remember that really this improper fraction is being multiplied by x. And when you're multiplying, you are supposed to divide. However, multiplying a fraction by its own reciprocal is the same thing as dividing it by itself. Because remember the rule keep change flip. If we were to take 21 fifths or negative 21 fifths and divide it by itself, that should give us positive 1. Because remember, anything divided by itself is positive 1. However, just to show the algorithm, we would have to keep, change, and flip. And two negatives would be multiplied to make a positive, and everything would cancel out to equal the number 1. So because we're multiplying this side by negative 5 over 21, we have to multiply 11 on this side by negative 5 over 21. Now everything on this side is going to completely cancel out the 21s and the 5s. And because we were multiplying two negatives, that leaves us with positive 1. So on the left-hand side of our equation, we have positive 1x, or just x. And on this side, we have to multiply 11 by negative 5 over 21. And let's just turn this whole number into a fraction. And there's nothing we can cancel out here, so we're going to multiply straight across. We have 11 times negative 5, which is negative 55. And the denominator is 21, because 1 times 21 is 21. Now we have to change this improper fraction into a mixed number. And remember, to do that, you can just take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. Well, first, just see how many times the denominator goes into the numerator. 21 fits into 55 twice, and 2 times 21 is 42, 
and 42 would be 13 away from 55. And that is what our numerator is going to be. And your denominator is going to remain the same. That is just 821. So x is equal to negative 2 and 13 over 21. Let's try another example. Just like the first example, we have a variable on both sides of our equation. So we're going to move this x over on the right-hand side, over on the left-hand side, and then move all of the numbers that are on the left-hand side over to the right so x is isolated. So let's start by writing minus 5 over on the left-hand side of our equation and minus 5 over on the right-hand side. Now, I cannot subtract 5 from 2 fifths x because these are not like terms. So what we're going to do is just write 2 fifths x minus 5. And over here on the left, we cancel out the positive 5 and the negative 5, which leaves us with 3 fourths x. Now the next thing we're going to do is take this term here, 2 fifths x, and subtract it from itself. So it can cancel out over on the right-hand side of our equation. And we have to subtract 2 fifths x from positive 3 fourths x. Now because we are subtracting fractions, we have to make sure we have a common denominator. And the lowest common denominator of 4 and 5 is 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that 4 into a 20 and this 5 into a 20 as well. And because this 4 increased by a factor of 5, we're going to increase this 3 by a factor of 5, which would give us 15. And because this 5 increased by a factor of 4, we do the same thing with the numerator. And 2 times 4 is 8. So now we have 15 twentieths take away 8 twentieths, which would leave us with 7 twentieths. And that's actually 7 twentieths x. And that is going to be equal to the negative 5 that we still have remaining over on the right-hand side of our equation. Okay, next I'm just going to write what we have at the top. 7 twentieths x equals negative 5. And to turn any coefficient that is a fraction into positive 1, all one has to do is multiply that fraction by its own reciprocal, which is basically the same thing as dividing it by itself. And because we multiply the left-hand side by 20 over 7, we're going to take this value and multiply it by 20 over 7 as well. Now everything over on the left-hand side will cancel out, leaving us with x. And now all we have to do is solve negative 5 times 20 over 7. 5 times 20 is 100. And for the denominator, 1 times 7 is 7. And because this value is negative and this value is positive, our result is going to be negative. Because a negative times a positive always yields a negative. Now all that is left to do is to rename this improper fraction as a mixed number. So first we're going to see how many times 7 can fit into 100. And 7 fits into 100 14 times. Now 14 times 7 is 98. And 98 is 2 away from 100. So 2 will become our numerator. And our denominator stays the same, which is a 7. And remember, this result is negative, so we cannot forget to bring our negative down. So x is equal to negative 14 and 2 sevenths. Let's try one more example. In this example, notice that on the right-hand side of our equation, we have a fraction on the outside of parentheses. This means we have to apply the distributive property to this half of our equation. So let's rewrite our equation as 2y minus 8 equals, and we have to multiply negative 1 half times 3, which is a product of negative 3 halves, 
and negative one half times negative five y is positive five halves y. Now what we're gonna do is take this minus eight and do the inverse of it and move it to the right hand side of our equation. And we're gonna take this y term here, positive five halves y, and move it to the left hand side of our equation. So let's do the inverse of minus eight, which is plus eight and we have to combine that eight with negative three halves because neither one of these terms have a y in it, so these are constants, and constants are like terms. So these opposites cancel out, leaving us with two y. Now to combine negative three halves and positive eight, what I'm gonna do is go off here on the side and write both of these terms with a common denominator. But first I'm gonna write eight as a fraction, which would be eight over one and the lowest common denominator of both of these fractions would be two. And because we doubled this denominator here, we have to double this numerator, which would give us 16, and 16 divided by two is still equal to eight, so these are equivalent fractions, and this denominator did not change, so we're gonna keep this as negative three halves. Now, if we take 16 halves and take away three halves, that would leave us with 13 halves. but we still have this positive 5 halves y on the right hand side of our equation to contend with. So now we're gonna do the opposite of that. The opposite of positive 5 halves y is negative 5 halves y. And we have to write that on the left hand side of our equation. And once again, we are trying to combine a whole number with a fractional value. So let's go back off to the side here and figure out what we would get by combining two with negative five halves. And the lowest common denominator of one and two is two. This denominator here stayed the same, so I'm gonna keep the numerator the same. And this denominator doubled, so the numerator has to follow suit. And so when we take four halves and combine it with negative five halves, that would leave us with negative one half y. So on the left-hand side of our equation, we're gonna write negative one half y is equal to 13 halves. Now we have one more step remaining. We have to take this negative one half as a coefficient of y and move it to the other side of our equation. And remember, our goal is just to get positive one y at the end. So what we're trying to do is turn this coefficient into one. And to turn anything into positive one, you have to divide it by itself. And with fractions, multiplying a fraction by its own reciprocal is a way to change it into positive one. Now I wrote this reciprocal as a negative because we know that a negative times a negative is a positive and these twos would cancel each other out. So that would leave us with positive one y, which is our goal on the left hand side of our equation. Now on the right hand side of our equation, we have to do the same thing to balance everything out. So we're gonna multiply 13 halves by negative two over one as well. And notice that the twos can cancel each other out. And that leaves us with a 13 on the top, a one on the bottom. And this is a positive times a negative, so our answer is gonna stay negative. And this can be further simplified to be negative 13. And that was three examples of solving equations involving negatives, fractions, as well as a variable on each side of the equation.